Hello YouTube. I have decided to engage A01011399, from this time on I'll call him Daniel, in a debate. During a short series of private messages I proposed and he accepted that the debate would be a point-by-point -point style debate with one topic being discussed until both of us agreed that the subject had run its course. At this time, I'm going to start playing his video, and I'm going to skip forward to a minute 30 where he introduced the topic that he chose for our first debate. I know we're going to choose the topic, so my topic is transition of fossils, specifically uh, evolution of humans, uh, you know, like from ape like to human, or from monkey like to human, or whatever, or uh, from ancient monkey to human, um, or whatever you want to call it, it's not relevant. Uh, so, let's start with the debate. So, as you heard, Daniel picked the first topic for our first debate. And that topic was transitional fossils, specifically evolution of humans. So now I'm going to let him start the debate, and I will address each topic as he brings it up. Okay, so let's start the debate with transitional fossils. Evolutionists claim that humans evolved from ancient monkeys, and they claim to have evidence in the fossil record to support that claim. The first statement that must be addressed is Daniel's assertion that, quote, evolutionists claim that humans evolved from ancient monkeys, unquote. While it is true that humans share a common ancestor with monkeys and other primates, this is a gross oversimplification of the facts. Our closest primate relatives are not monkeys, but a different lineage altogether that is far more recent. The actual scientific evidence is that humans are great apes. This was even accepted by the father of taxonomy, Carl von Linné, or Linnaeus as he is more commonly known. The evidence from fossils and genetics for the family tree of primates goes something like this. Ancestral primates diverged from the tree shrew lineage around 60 million years ago. Then the lineages of lemurs split off from the tarsier monkey and ape lineage around 58 million years ago. About 40 million years ago, the Old World Monkeys, which is the group that apes came from, divided from the New World Monkeys. Next, around 30 million years ago, Asian Monkeys split from African Monkeys. And finally, around 25 million years ago, apes became a separate lineage from the Old World Monkeys. I know this might seem to be nitpicking, but claiming that humans evolved from monkeys is not only misrepresenting the scientific reality, it is also setting up the possibility of a straw man argument and must be corrected. For example, they have atopic sufferences, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and many others. However, evolutionists have to deal with a serious problem. Even assuming that the reconstructions are accurate, the fossils are not in the correct order. Next, Daniel lists some of the extinct hominid species and then states that, quote, the fossils are not in the correct order, unquote, without ever stating what the scientific discoveries tell us about the hominid lineage. Since he fails to address this issue now or anywhere in his video, and since it is the topic that he chose for the debate, I will list the scientifically accepted lineage of humans after the group diverged from the lineage that led to our closest living ancestors, the chimpanzees. There are currently between 15 to 19 extinct hominid species since the human and chimp lineages split around 7 million years ago, starting with Sahelanthropus chadensis. The most complete of this species is a skull named Ptolemy, and is theorized to be the common ancestor between chimps and humans. The first known species after this split is from Ororin tugensis, dating around 6 million years ago, but due to its recent discovery and the limited number of fossils, its place in human evolution is still being debated among paleoanthropologists. Next occurring in a range from 5.8 to 4.4 million years ago are the two species of Artipithecus. A. Ramidus and A. Cabida show traits which place them in a link between the previous species and the next genus, which are the Australopithecus. There are a number of species within the genus Australopithecus, starting with the oldest, Anamensis, dating to around 4 million years ago. Next in the genus is Australopithecus afarensis, which includes the famous Lucy fossil. 
Afarensis has been well studied with over 300 individuals collected and a long existence as a species between 3.9 and 2.9 million years ago. Australopithecus africanus was a species that existed between 3 and 2 million years ago concurrent with Afarensis, but had a skull structure and build much more like modern humans. Australopithecus garhi lived during the same time period as Africanus, and it is theorized by some anthropologists to be the last link between the genus of Australopithecus and Homo, while others suggest it was only a competitor with the genus Homo. I have not included a few species due to the consensus by anthropologists that they are either an evolutionary offshoot or that the specimens that we know them from only exist in very low numbers and it is not that well understood how they fit into the lineage of humanity as of yet. So now we can start with the species in the genus Homo. First is Homo habilis, or handyman, dating in a time span between one and a half and two and a half million years ago. Homo georgicus dates around 1.8 million years ago and is agreed to be the transitional form between habilis and erectus. Homo erectus lived between 1.8 to around 300,000 years ago and coexisted with Homo ergaster, which is either considered to be a subspecies or separate species. Homo antecessor is the transitional form between Homo erectus and the lineage that lead to Neanderthals and archaic modern humans, and they lived between 1.2 and 800,000 years ago in Europe. Neanderthals are known from Europe and Asia starting around 300,000 years ago, although some evidence suggests that proto-Neanderthal populations in Europe existed up to 200,000 years earlier. Neanderthals died off in Asia around 50,000 years ago and in Europe around 30,000 years ago, with some anthropologists pointing out that cultural and skeletal traits existed in isolated populations as recently as 10,000 years ago. Since there is no clear taxonomic differences between the last known specimens of Homo erectus and the earliest known specimens of Homo heidelbergensis, the archaic humans, it is very difficult to point out a clear date when the archaic humans came into existence as a species, but most anthropologists place the date around 200,000 years ago, which gives archaic humans a range of existence between 500,000 years ago and 200,000 years ago, with modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, appearing around that time, 200,000 years ago. Again, I left out numerous species in the genus Homo that are either not that well understood, how they fit into our lineage, or there are too few individual fossils to let us know how they fit into our lineage. So now that I've laid out the current scientific understanding of the correct order of the topic that Daniel chose to debate, let's see if he has anything else to say on the subject. For example, this footprint found in Bolivia is at least 5 million years old. Lucy is 3.2 million years old which means that the footprint is much older than Lucy. A footprint from Bolivia? The first thing to point out about the footprint that Daniel shows us is that it came from a photo in a Croatian tabloid, which Daniel cites in his sidebar. The tabloid is called Yavno, and it also features articles on UFOs, celebrities, and naked women. The other thing to point out about the photo is that it's a fake, which even the tabloid admits with a caption of illustrative photo. What Daniel is trying to refer to is a carved footprint known as the Pistada de Inca, or the footprint of the Inca, which is found outside of a village near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. It was first reported on in mid-2007 by an ultra-nationalist branch of the Center for Investigation of Integral Technology known as the Commonwealth of Ancestral Wisdom. I emailed the Commonwealth and received a press release dated February 2008, which included photos of this footprint, along with other similar carved footprints found in the area. Even the press release states that these are nothing more than petroglyphs. European archaeologists and anthropologists who have visited the site have come to the conclusion that it is a carving and was made for the purpose of ancestor worship by local people who still make pilgrimages to this footprint and other ones in the area. Even looking at the photos, it is easy to see the fracture marks and scrapes left by the carving process, and other local footprints are obviously man-made carvings as evident by their stylized appearance. 
So let's see if Daniel has anything else to offer.